Hi, this is Kat and today I have for the first time in this channel this white adidas with a little bit of pink color or peach color I guess. So today I'm in the north of Mexico City and I'm gonna get a sneaker cleaning, the first sneaker cleaning for these sneakers, yeah. <laughs> so I uh, found a shoe shiner who agreed on making a video with me and I'm just so excited to show you this area and this sneaker cleaning and yeah, uh, keep watching till the end of the video so I can show you a little bit of the area. It's not very touristy so you know it's kind of interesting to see a different area. Okay so let's get a sneaker cleaning, yeah. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes, ¿cómo está? ¿Cuánto me cobra por los tenis? Ah, 20 pesos. ¿20? Ok, gracias. Disculpe, ¿le puedo hacer unas preguntas? ¿Cómo se llama? Armando Morales. Mucho gusto, Armando. Yo soy Katia. ¿Cuántos años lleva en este oficio? 32. ¿32? ¿En este mismo lugar? 
Ah, sí. y o sea, cuando comenzó usted, ¿comenzó ya con esta, esta silla? No, 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 comencé trabajando para una persona. Ah. Y después yo me independicé, compré mi carrito y ya compré este lugar. Ah. Ah, otra ah qué bueno. Y este, pero siempre ha sido como de esta zona. Bueno, aquí siempre he estado. ¿Siempre he estado? He estado. Bueno, nada más me cambié de unos metros. Estaba en una esquina, luego ya me cambié para allá de los un ratito. Ajá. Unos meses. Ya lo uh -huh. estoy aquí. Ah. Pero aquí he estado siempre. Ah, qué bueno. ¿Y usted cómo comenzó? O sea, ¿Usted diría que alguien le enseñó o aprendió Aprendí. cómo? Aprendí. No, 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 me lo enseñaron. Le enseñaron. Antes de llegar aquí ya sabía mostrar. Ah. Porque no puede ponerse uno así nada más sin, sin saber. Ajá. Entonces este, me enseñaron las personas. Donde trabajaba, como eran tres puestos de alquiler, uh -huh. entonces ellos ya sabían, muchos ya sabían, este, de ahí aprendí. Ah. Viendo, aprendí, y me dicen, no, no la hago así, así es. Ah, Pero bien. gente que ya sabía. ¿Y, ¿Y usted es aquí de la Ciudad de México? Soy de aquí de, sí. de, de, aquí de, de la de ciudad. ciudad. Ah, bien. Sí. ¿Cuántos años tiene? 58. 58. Ah. Yo ya tengo 32 años. 32 en el negocio. ¿Y alguien de su familia era eh, también hacedor de calzado? No, es usted el primero. En... <ríe> sí. y, por ejemplo, ¿usted diría que la mayoría de sus clientes son hombres o mujeres? Eh, mujeres venían, trabajaban en oficina o en negocios y venían a los casos. Ahorita creo que por lo de la pandemia ya no han regresado tanto a las oficinas, por eso ya no tiene tantas clientes no, mujeres. Yo creo, o... yo, no, yo creo que ahorita hay más hombres que mujeres. Pero sí, de los dos tenemos luego ellos que señalan que les da pena. Entonces vienen y me dejan una bolsita, tres palos, palos. Ah, se los entregan un rato. Sí, pero algunos no tienen pena, algunos se suben y se lucen. Ah, porque usted cree que cuando comenzó sí habían menos mujeres que se voleaban los zapatos. Ahora hay menos. Ahorita hay menos. Ah, pero. O ya de que también muchas, por la comodidad la gente ya usa este, guarachitos. La mujer como que es más este. Tiene más variedad en el calzado. Sí. ¿no? El hombre no, porque para el trabajo, zapato, tenis, pero por la regular es un zapato. ¿no? Y, y en muy cliente, en caso, por la regular son gente que trabaja en oficinas. Y por ejemplo, ahorita con lo de la pandemia, ¿le afectó bastante la no, carga pues de trabajo? Sí, ahorita uno, hubo unos meses que hubo poco, poco trabajo, pero pues hay que continuar así. Trabajo, ¿Usted trabajo? dejó de trabajar un tiempo por los tres meses? Lo de, tres meses. Por la pandemia. Cuando estuvo así muy agresiva, este, nos descansamos tres meses. Okay. Y ya conforme de vuelta fue el sábado de verde, ya no un poquito más de trabajo. Ah, qué bueno. Nos quedamos un poquito más tarde. Porque usted trabaja aquí de... Eh, de lunes que, a sábado. De lunes a sábado. De, de 11 de la mañana a 7 de la noche. Ah, bien. Y el domingo descanso. ¿Y usted, por ejemplo, prefiere que le digan eh, hacedor de calzado o bolero? Sí, o no? de, bueno, nos dicen hacedor de calzado, pero, Ajá. o bolero, ¿eh? pero, pues, ah, no, no me incomoda. No, usted no tiene no. preferencia. Luego ah. me dicen bolas. Ya, ya. Ah, eso está, también había escuchado por lo de la bola de grasa, ¿no? Sí, sí que cuando empezó este, este, este negocio, que había, este, se vendía el producto en en unas bolas tenía la crema y la grasa en, como, una, como una cosa redonda, ¿no? Ajá. Entonces por eso se les dice boleros, se les quedó así. ¿Y usted tiene, por ejemplo, ahorita clientes de, de ya muchos años que vienen desde regularmente? Que algunos, por, algunos clientes desde que llegué aquí tengo todos. Sí. Ah, qué bueno. Conservo esos clientes, pero, este, pero aquí continuamos. Aquí, aquí, ah, qué bueno. Qué bueno. 32 años y, pues no se me ha hecho pesado, ¿eh? Y por ejemplo, estudiantes cree que es el. También, ¿sí? jóvenes, pero por lo regular ya muchos jóvenes están. Tenis. Oh, Hola, Jeremy, buenas tardes. Sí, por lo regular los jóvenes ya. Ah, excepto a los jóvenes que ya van a salir de la escuela, que ya. Okay. Es cuando ya empiezan este, Ah, ya, ya más ya, formal. Ya, ya ¿no? más avanzados, ¿no? Ah, ya. Okay. Bueno, lo que nos convino fue la estación del Metrobús, porque sí hay un poquito más de fila. Mm. Pero hace, antes del Metrobús, había, había, ha habido gente aquí, pero. O ahora hay más, mm, pero ese era el metrobús. Y como nos tocó cerca de la estación, mire, es la una calle, la calle nada más. Sí. Se puso a la calle y está el metrobús. Bueno, muchas gracias por, por su apoyo no, y no, por no, la. Que, no, pues, que, muchas sí. gracias. Sí, espero que esto les sirva para. Sí, muchas gracias, ¿sí? en verdad. Gracias, no, saludo. No, no, no. 
let me show you the result on these sneakers. I think they look so white. I'm so happy with the result. And yeah, I'm ready to wear them again. He took the time to carefully clean this part. And yeah, um, they look like new again. Um, let me show you the soles. Uh, the brand is Adidas and the number is five. In the description, you can find the location of this Shushen stand. Also my Instagram account if you want to follow me, my PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel, and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more extra content and behind the cameras and stuff like that. I hope you can also support me there too. Well, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. This avenue is Montevideo and this one is Instituto Politecnico. The Politecnico University of Mexico, I guess, it's over there. And the South is over here. This is Kat and today I have again these red boots, like long boots. I think I have only showed them in the channel once and I decided to get them shine again because as you can see they are very dusty and yeah they need some shine. Let me show you the soles. The soles they are a little bit, a little bit worn but they still look alright and today I'm gonna get a boot shine with Miguel. Well, I hope you like this boot shine and let me know in the comment sections what you think about. Okay, so let's get a boot shine. Hola, buenas tardes, Miguel. ¿Cómo está? ¿Qué tal? Eh, ¿Cuánto me cobra por estas botas? Ah, igual, 30. Ok, va, gracias.
Muchas gracias, Miguel. Sí, sí, hasta luego. Bye. Let me show you the amazing result on these boots. I think Miguel did an amazing job at shining these boots. Have a look at the tips. They look so, so, so shiny. Yeah, have a look at that. It just looks so, so, so shiny. I think the color also looks more vibrant and I'm really, really happy with the result. I think I showed you the soles before, but uh, he took the time to clean this part and paint it. So yeah, I'm really happy with the result. Let me know in the comment sections what you think about the shoe shine job. And if you have some shoes like similar to this color, I know it's not like a usual color, but um, I really like these boots. And yes, it's not boots season, but I was like, well, oh, let's get a boot shine. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the description you can find the location of Miguel's Shushin stand, also my Instagram account if you want to follow me, my PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes or boots to this channel, and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more behind the cameras and, you know, 
uh, like the filming process and testing ideas and asking, you know, advice. So I hope you can also support me there. Mm, it's very interesting, yeah. <laughs> but I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. We are on Sullivan Street and this is the Jardín del Arte. On Sundays you can find the art market here every Sunday. I think you have seen that in one of my previous videos with Miguel, uh, another shoe shiner I've made some videos with. And it looks kind of quiet right now, but it looks very green. And yeah, I'm just so excited to show you this area. It's kind of it's kind of residential and like with office spaces and some businesses but I quite like it yeah I, I like how this street changes throughout the day um Hi, this is Kat, and today I have again this like an Oxford style shoes with heels. They are not so dirty, but they actually need some shine. You can see here that they're a little bit dusty and also on the heel. And yeah, in this channel, we love shiny shoes. So today I found a shoe shiner outside of a hotel, really close to the Jardín del Arte. And he agreed to make a video with me and to have his work documented. So please keep watching till the end of the video so you can know his story. Okay, so let's get a shoe shine, yeah. Hola, buenas tardes, ¿qué tal? Eh, ¿Cuánto me cobra por estos zapatos? ¿30? Ok, va, gracias. Sí.
Muchas gracias. Gracias. Hola, ¿le puedo hacer unas preguntas? ¿Cómo se llama? Mucho gusto, Rolando. Yo me llamo Katia. ¿Cuántos años lleva trabajando como hacedor de calzado? Yo en 2010. Pero me como tres años. Yo he en agosto. Pero usted cree que sea por lo de la pandemia, como que todavía hay personas que no regresan a la oficina o porque las personas ya no se volean tanto los zapatos. Ya no se volean. Parte de mucho de eso. Es como yo les digo, yo no puedo darme un gusto de ir a tener una comida en los zapatos. Ya nos saca uno para comer. Ya andamos. Ya no puedo ser, bueno, yo, ¿verdad? No sé, no es lo fácil. Puede ser dos, tres, cuatro, hasta cinco oleadas al día. Pero es que ya no sale. Sí. No es cuando antes había muchísimo trabajo. Hasta el 2017. En 2018 en adelante se acabó. Ya. Yeah. Ya no hasta ahora. Uh, ¿Y usted cómo aprendió a...? A través de... Haciendo lo que... Encontrándole la forma. Buscándole cómo se ven mejor. Y le voy a poner esto. Ahora le voy a poner eso, o sea, así. Otros materiales, ¿no? ¿Qué día yo sin saber quién le pone? Al trabajo que les gusta porque echamos, le buscamos la manera de que salga un poco. Sí. Si no nos este. Es que no nos gusta, pues no le echábamos nada más. Y por ejemplo, ¿usted comenzó en 2010 aquí en este mismo lugar o comenzó como con una cajita para bolear? No, oh. ah. Y por ejemplo, ¿alguien más en su familia era también hacedor de calzado? No, o... no. No, nomás yo soy el que. Y empecé porque estaba yo sin trabajo, es donde empecé a trabajar. Y ahí resultó de que ya no creo que menos para no sé para los ¿Usted diría que la mayoría de sus clientes eh, son hombres o también lle llega alguna mujer como...? Sí, una... una, 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 una ligado, ¿verdad? Ah, sí, porque ahorita... ¿Y es usted aquí de, de la Ciudad de México? No, yo soy del Estado de Puebla. Desde los 10 años, a los 14, a los 15, vivía aquí a México. Y de ahí, en realidad, ¿Y recuerda usted su primera volea de, de zapatos? No, no, no. Yo empecé a trabajar en la Valle. ¿Con lo de la pandemia usted estuvo trabajando aquí o no? No, no, porque yo ¿En qué horario está eh, aquí? De lunes a viernes. Muchas gracias por, por su ayuda y por su tiempo y por la boleada. Gracias, cuídense mucho. Bye. I want to show you the result on these leather shoes. I think he took great care of the leather. He was very like, like careful at applying the wax and the paint and everything. I'm really happy with the result. Let me know in the comments what you think about the shoe shine and yeah, have a look at the sole. As some of you like to see the sole. Here is the sole. I'm sorry I don't show it sometimes in other videos, but you can see here that the brand is Me Too and the number is 5 Mexico. I think that's 8 US and 38 euros. Oh wow, it's really hot right now, but I really like how these shoes look in the sun. They look so shiny. <laughs> sorry I get so excited about the shininess of my shoes. In the description, you can find the location of this shoe stand also my Instagram account if you want to follow me, my PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel, and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more behind the cameras and testing some, some ideas and asking few, some questions about the content. So I hope you can also support me there. But I hope you like this video, subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. It really means a lot to me that we're creating this amazing community on YouTube. And I couldn't be more excited. Uh, 
you know, your really nice comments and all your support. Just keep me going. Hi, this is Kat, and today I have again these black converse. Let me show you the soles. The soles look, yeah, kind of dusty. And yeah, there's not much to clean on these converse, but they will definitely, definitely, definitely need some cleaning, you know, just to look presentable. Today I'm in the Parque Santa Maria de Rivera with Francisco, and I'm gonna get a sneaker cleaning. Okay, so let's get a sneaker cleaning. Yeah. Hola, ¿qué tal, Francisco? Buen día, ¿cómo está? ¿Qué tal? Muy bien, muy bien. Eh, ¿Cuánto me cobra por estos? Eh, 20. Okay, va, gracias. Aquí está. Entonces, <ríe> 
Ah no, es que Paquito está trabajando. Muchas gracias Francisco, cuídese. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. Muy bien. Gracias, bye. Let me show you the amazing result on these combers. I think Francisco did an amazing job at cleaning the soles and you know the white part. And I think they're looking so 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 white. I'm really happy with the result and probably I should get them clean more often and you know because they were looking really 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 dirty. Have a look at this part, it looks really clean. He applies some uh, thinner, um, in Spanish we call it thinner, <laughs> but it's, you know, like a solvent. So it helps to clean some surfaces such as sneakers. Well, in the description, you can find the location of Francisco Shushan stand. Also my Instagram account, in case you want to follow me, my PayPal account, if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel or some sneakers to this channel, my Patreon, where I'll be uploading more behind the cameras and more extra content. Um, I hope you follow me there too. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me that the channel is growing and all the nice comments and positivity in this channel. Well, thank you. Bye. I don't want the guy to walk away with a big spot that she missed. Yeah.
You know, I always say the front of the shoe is the client's reputation, and the rear of the shoe is the shoe shiner's reputation. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Kat, and today I have again this Dr. Martin Boots. As you can see, I haven't fixed the soles, and yeah, they don't look so dirty, but they will always, 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 always need some shine. So today I'm in a different country. I'm in Canada, in Montreal city, and I found a shoe shiner who I thought would be interested in making a video with me. And yeah, he agreed to make a video, and I'm so excited to show you, you know, just a new and different shoe shine experience. So let's get a boot shine. Yeah, boot shine this time. The type of people that climb into a shoe shine chair are older people mostly. They didn't fit in those narrow chairs. So I thought if I wanted to expand this business, mm -hmm. I would have to have these chairs built proper. Yeah. So I started to uh, hire the guy to do that for to build these chairs. But that was back in the 90s, you said? No, I started building chairs in 2008. I wanted chairs that invite women to climb onto them. Yes. I don't like those big wooden proper chairs. When I was um, 53 years old, I don't notice two minutes. I have a, a nerve disorder. Mm -hmm. My hands my head tremble a lot. So you'll be seeing that in a moment. A difficult time doing things. So I was thinking, what could I do to make a living? Because I like to be around people. Um, I like to interact with people. I was always good at that when I was younger. But who is going to hire somebody who has like uh, this disease of people? Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell because I'll be shaking like crazy doing a presentation. So one day I was getting my hair cut at the hair salon mm -hmm. and uh, I was actually getting a manicure. And uh, I heard somebody say we have everything for men. Manicure, pedicure, hair coloring, massage. The only thing we're missing is a shoe shine board. And I said, wow, I can do that. So that, that's where, I, and I started looking around Montreal. I, I saw there's not a lot of shoe shiners. So I was looking why are there not a lot. Then I started coming up with reasons. The equipment was very, very ugly. The way the shoe shiners dress and present themselves, like in the olden days, like they do in Mexico and some of the other foreign countries, yeah, that's not good marketing. So I thought maybe if I changed the way I dress, I, I thought I could put shoe shine chairs in many different locations mm -hmm. and uh, so on. But then the biggest problem I had was that nobody wants to shine shoes. Tomorrow, that's number uh, one. Mm -hmm. It's considered a, a trade for people that are stupid. Oh, really? Uh, oh, sure. It's dumb. Uh, they can't they do anything else. That's why they're shining shoes. I mean, when I told people over the years what business I was in, even to this day, like yesterday, I ran into somebody at a restaurant and she, it was clear she was successful. I started asking her about her business. And as soon as she asked me about mine, immediately she got turned right on. You say the word shoe shiner to most people, you're a loser. It's like, that's the way it looks. And where are you going to find shoe shiners to shine for you? You have to know what to show them. This building, if I wasn't who I am, they'd never let me in this building. Mm -hmm. I have years of experience, and uh, they won't just uh, take some guy because he's Mexican and allow him in your building. Anyway, that's how I got into the business. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was lucky I got a lot of bookings to do a lot of events over time. Mm -hmm. I used the entertainment uh, that I learned in radio, mm -hmm. and just transferred it over to... Uh, Shining. This is soap. Uh, so I'm just going to start with uh, cleaning them a little bit. At the same time, it's like a massage for the clients. You have to realize that they're enjoying this. They're usually men that are on the chair. And um, so um, it's taking some of the dirt off. 
taking some of the old wax off. If you want the, uh, the, the if you want to get the best shine that you can, best to remove the dirt that's there, the dust, mm -hmm. and uh, and the old wax that was put there. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because people like to watch videos of um, of shoe shiners. They're intrigued by it, yeah. But unfortunately, they're not so generous with their money. So, um, so that's it. Just start by that. Your shoes are really not uh, not dirty. You got to make sure that uh, if you want the customer to come back, that uh, you have a little bit of stitching. Normally, I would uh, color the stitching, but of course, you like that look there, so I'm aware of that. So I'm going to leave that uh, like that. Yeah, I'm just going to do this here. No, oh, those Mexican guys, they're, they're good, man. Superstars. But are they making a living? There's no money in this business and nobody wants to do it. You know, you know exactly, I mean, people, normal people, they're not going to encourage their children to get into this metier, into this craft. Mm -hmm. No. They're going to have them go and learn computer skills. And, uh, but, uh, so this is really a dying art. Uh, I think when, maybe not when I die, this business is soon going to be no longer uh, available in, uh, certainly not in Montreal. In Toronto, they got a lot of shoe shine stamps. I always check behind uh, the uh, shoe mm -hmm. to make sure I didn't uh, miss something. Mm -hmm. you know, I always say the front of the shoe is the client's reputation and the rear of the shoe is the shoe shiner's reputation. Mm -hmm. You don't want the guy to walk away with a big uh, spot that you missed. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so I take out the mirror and also as part of the show, well, uh, people are watching sometimes. The mirror attracts attention. Yeah. Well, people look so wow, it's like going to the barber. Look at this guy. I once did a show at, uh, at uh, one of the convention centers in Montreal. It was a trucker's show. Mm -hmm. So everybody was wearing cowboy boots, the most of them. They were truckers. Uh -huh. So um, I had a large audience of uh, people standing there while I was shining this guy's boots, mm -hmm. uh, cowboy boots. And what I decided to do, I'd never done that before. His boots were never been shined since he bought them, I don't know when, right? So I decided to do only one boot for the audience that was, I could hear them talking behind me. They're going like, wow, while I was going through the process of bringing them back to life again. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, then when I finished, I, I stood up, I took up, I showed them the difference between the two, and people were applauding like I was on stage, and then I took a bow and then started doing. This is just soap uh, that I put on your shoe. Mm -hmm. No wax, no nothing, and you can already tell that the boot is um, thankful. Yeah. It's starting to smile again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, but it's pretty depressing, you guys. Uh, I'm trying to get you depressed, but I don't think there's a market anymore in this, uh, in this business. And the good days are behind me. I've been flown to Europe. I've been flown to Europe to shine shoes, shoes. and shine at events. Oh, and where in Europe? Stockholm, Sweden and Germany. I don't think you're getting it. The company flew me to Europe 
That's pretty amazing. Years ago, but still, I did it. No? Yeah. Ah. There's no more money to it. It's all there is to it. People aren't spending. And uh, the good times are behind. Getting ready to die, dude. Yeah. But do you think at some point in like history, shoe shining was something popular here in Montreal or? Well, way back in the day, uh, when the port of Montreal, when the business people used to come in with their furs, mm -hmm. and the hunters would come in, uh, uh, they, they, they would have shoe shine stands down at the port of Montreal. And all the rich, successful business people would climb up and get a shoe shine for for three dollars just to climb up and be seen by other business people. It used to mean, look at me, I'm successful. Yeah. You know, first I can afford this, and uh, sitting up high, higher than everybody else, it was a prestigious uh, couple of minutes with uh, with the shoe shiner, which they didn't pay much attention to in those days. The shoe shiner once once again not looked upon as uh, an artist. Yeah. No. Now today I know that they are artists because they say that shoe shining is a dying art. Mm -hmm. If it's a dying art, then the shoe shiners must be artists. Yeah. So not all of them. You, you yeah. have to you know, need a few years of experience before you're considered an artist. But uh, that's how it started way back when. But um, it's hard because the buildings, they charge you rent. Who could afford to pay rent? Are they making any money? No, especially these days, nobody comes. And yeah. even in the other days when they were better. And then the, the shoe shiners in the older days, including Mexico now and some of the other countries, they used to think that they had to set up in a place where there was a lot of people, a yeah. lot of traffic. So they would set up in shopping centers. Well, business people, successful executives, business, they don't hang around shopping centers. Shopping centers are for people who don't have anything to do. They're walking around the shopping center. Yes, there's a lot of people, but that's not your market. There's no people there. The market would be in a building like this, but uh, unfortunately, there's a million reasons why people don't come. Yeah, and it's not like in Mexico that you can have like a shoe shine stand on the street or yes. like the shoe shine box. You can have your shoe shine stand right on the street because mm -hmm. of the weather. It's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, or have a little box. You know. They started off with little boxes uh, in, in Mexico and some of the other many, many, many countries around the world. And then they went to shoe shine stands where they had a, a box with cushions on it. And then they'd have these feet here. And um, and so the guy who had his little box, well, he wasn't as prestigious as the guy who had a uh, bench, stand. cushions on it and uh, so on. And uh, so that went on for years and years. But now going into the 21st century, the, you know, I'm sure shoe centers have found it's buildings like this where your market is. Mm -hmm. These are business lawyers, bankers, executives, and um, and uh, they don't want a cushion box. They won't let you in the building unless you've got something that coordinates with their design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very, very, very oh. picky about that. Just to tell you, mm -hmm. I had a very nice shoe shine stand down there uh, for many year, years. And then they moved me down here, and they, the building, they. This is all their stuff mm -hmm. because they want it to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You can't look that way. You cannot present yourself in this building. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then the other buildings, I went to every single building in Montreal um, when I first was looking to move indoors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't shine outdoors in Montreal yeah. for four seasons. And, and, um, 99% um, of the, well, less 
first of all, 75% when they heard I was, even though I walked into a seat, the leasing people in a shirt and tie and looked like a businessman, so they would take me seriously, mm -hmm. they threw me out. As soon as they heard the word shoe shine, you're out. They, they, they don't have any interest in talking to you anymore. And you would think they'd be interested in having a service like this in their big commercial office tower. Yeah. Because they, when they're releasing space, they can say, we have this great service here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nobody else in town has it, but we do. No, they don't, uh, they don't want it. Shoe shining, you're out. It's disgusting. And that's why in Toronto, they don't call themselves shoe shiners. They call themselves ballets. Yeah, even they are ashamed to refer to themselves as shoe shiners. So they call themselves ballets. Ballets. Yeah, because nobody has any respect. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sad to hear that. It's, 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 it's sad, even me. Somebody asked me what I do for a living. It takes me four minutes to find the words. After all these years, I'm still too shy to come out and say those words, you know? Uh, so I found different, I operate a shoe shine business. I run a shoe shine business. Uh, they still don't sound good. You know, shoe shine is not, but yet, Thousands of people around the world love to see videos on shoe shiners. It's weird, but if you want to befriend them or anything like that, uh, as soon as they hear that's the train that you're in, you're no longer interested. If you're at a table with a few people, you're nobody's talking to you. That's for sure. I'm sorry to hear that. It's life, too. It's life. That's the way it is. Yeah. Oh, but yesterday that woman turned out she's a professional musician. Yeah, she's 80 years old, still plays guitar, and she's still making money in the industry. Mm -hmm. She's sitting next to me in a, in a restaurant, in a, in a restaurant that's not expensive. And uh, then it turned to me. She said, well, when you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. I said, yes, I love what I do. I'm still working. <laughs> and so she said, what do you do? I had to tell her. I regretted going there, but it was too late. She asked me what I did. So I told her. After that, the conversation stopped. No interest at all in continuing with me. You could see the lack of respect. It mm -hmm. hurts. Yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, but then she doesn't live to her words. I would have loved to have told her how egocentric she <laughs> is. I get to talk to so many people, um, successful or not so It doesn't matter. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a life. It's interesting to know when you're in a taxi, talk to the taxi driver and ask him, um, uh, how long, how did he get into this? How long has he been doing this? Why did he get into it? Was it for the money? Was it because he likes the doctor? Why? You know? And yeah. then, and so on. But she, she, like, her, like many, 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 many people, um, you want to hear a funny story. I was in that restaurant, and uh, I started talking to a gentleman now, sitting all by himself. I'd seen him many times in that restaurant. So I started talking. One thing led to another. He's retired right now, but everybody died in his family and they left him like a million dollars. But he doesn't boast to brag about it. He's got a lot of expenses, upkeep the house they gave him, and you know, he's not a show off, nothing like that. But then he asked me, so I had to tell him. Well, I told him. From then on, every time I met him in the restaurant, he always laughed at me, he made a point of laughing saying the two words, oh, the shoe shiner's here, and going on. So um, it would bother me, of course. Well, yeah. I try not to let it, but it, it bothers me. So one day, uh, I told him, this was one year ago, but, right? well, maybe in this year, 2022, uh, I said, uh, because he always laughed at me. I said, oh, I'm on my way to shine 
uh, for um, RBC, the bank, at their corporate office. They gave me a contract. And um, just to welcome people back to work again, mm -hmm. they decided to hire my service and shine for the employees that day. And uh, that's a nice, nice gesture. A very nice gesture, exactly. Um, I didn't tell you the first part. I have that done that for them three times over the years, mm -hmm. but still, it's a nice gesture. And yeah. This guy didn't know, so I told him I was trying to make myself look good because of the way he talks to me when he sees me. And, uh, and so I said, I'm going to RBC, I got a contract, I can sure use the money and I'm happy. And RBC said, uh, my investment advisor is at RBC, the Dominion Securities. I said, uh, oh, I'm going to Dominion Securities. So I said, um, where, where? So he gave me the address. I said, oh, they're the guys that booked me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he said, well, say hello to my investment advisor. He gave me the name. So when I went there, the, the, the service was a big, huge success. Everybody loves getting their shoe shop. Some get in the chairs, some bring you their footwear. Mm -hmm. And um, big, huge success. I'm already booked for next year. Oh. And uh, so then I called that guy while I was in there to come and see me. And he came, I told him, I'm a friend of this guy. After that, a few weeks later, he had an appointment with his investment advisor. The investment advisor said, wow, you know Harry Klein? So this guy, Harold, said, yeah, yeah, I met him in the restaurant. And he said, well, that guy's amazing. He said, do you really know him? And the guy said, well, not really. I just met him in the restaurant. Well, that guy's amazing, amazing. And so he started telling him some things about me. So then the next time I saw that guy, he was like, wow, this guy says you're like amazing. So it felt good because to be laughed at all the time, it hurts. Now, not everybody does it, but a lot of people do. They're just not... Uh, they don't appreciate the art. They don't appreciate the art. Even in Mexico, same thing. Those poor guys. And, uh, and they're real artists. Some people paint. And they call themselves artists. They're shitty. They have no talent, but just because they paint, they're artists. These guys in Mexico, these guys are artists, and not just Mexico. India, there's all over the world. England, uh, these guys are like wow, yeah, amazing. Wow. And um, but people don't treat them like they're artists. Yeah, they don't. In Mexico, many shoe shiners who I have interviewed. Um, say that they feel like people look down on them. Of course, they yeah. do look down because they're in the, oh well, yeah, but in like... my chair they do look down. <laughs> people look down because it's supposed to be a, 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 a service that, the reason these shoe shiners do it apparently is because they don't have education to do anything else. I've been to school myself, you know, I went to uh, 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 Concordia. I studied journalism advertising. I went to radio school. I graduated in broadcasting, got a job in radio. I'm no dummy. Uh, I can keep up a conversation with any executive. And that's another thing I love about this, this job. I get to talk to uh, the Prime Minister of Canada was my regular client over here in this building. And a lot of, uh, you know, powerful, very powerful people. Uh, feel for them, I honestly do. I, I'm happy to be an old man now, thank God. And uh, I'm still alive. Uh, the universe chose for me to still be here for a while. Uh, but um, there's, um, and I still love it, but people don't count, that's the problem. And look, he came, but he dropped off his shoes. I didn't even get a chance to sp spend a little time with him. I had another guy, he climbed into the chair today. He was very nice. It's not his first time. Uh, very bright guy. Also, I learned a lot about certain subjects that I know very little about, like finance, finance and politics also. So it's an interesting business, Shushan, if you're interested in uh, other uh, uh, subjects yeah. besides Shushan. Uh, it, it, it's fun. And then they, you got other very nice people that are very nice. Those are the bad clients, but there's some customers like you that think that shoe shining is uh, interesting. How did they get into the business? That's what always interests me. Yeah. Uh, 
how, why, how have they progressed in the number of years? I've been doing it for 19 years now, so in February it'll be 20 years. Um, all the steps and how I got here and what I did to get here, uh, like any other business, it wasn't easy. And, um, and, uh, but it's interesting. Because the thing is, you have to, in anything you decide to do, in anything you decide to do, you have to stick in it. Even when you're not making money, even when you're not getting contracts, even when you run out of ideas because the ideas you thought were really going to work, didn't work. Keep on keeping on. Keep on trying. Keep on, uh, use your imagination. Uh, I always say it's not about uh, excuses. Uh, no, no excuses. How is that going to help you? I could tell you what. You have to find solutions. Yeah. There's an answer out there. You could make it work. So um, that's uh, certainly what I try and do uh, all the time. Yeah. But uh, don't quit whatever you do. Yeah, so today you brought me just black shoes, so let me just take a look in the back. Are you going to run out of video there? No, it's fine. I have plenty of space and battery. So what I'm going to do, you stay there. When I was uh, uh, 53 years old, I was down on my luck. And I had, uh, you know, had a problem. <laughs> and. Uh, I, uh, I was financially broke uh, and uh, I had made some investments and I tried different businesses, but I failed at everything. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, just like Thomas Edison, he invented the light bulb. Uh -huh. His name is Thomas Edison. And he said, I did not fail 1,000 times trying to invent the light bulb. <laughs> I found 1,000 different ways it cannot be done. Mm -hmm. So that's the story of all our lives. Try, 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 try. fail, try, fail, never give up. Yeah. Then when I was 53, I was, I hated myself. I hated going to work out with friends because I was broke. As an old man at 53 already, I found it to nothing in life. Radio was behind me. I was no longer a star. I was another loser. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, and then um, I found this business, the shoe shine business. When I was at the barber, you know, I heard them say the only thing we're missing. I said I could do that. And also the investment. I said how much could it be to get into the shoe shine business? So I bored a few dollars here and there and started, um, you know, getting into the business. Yeah, so that's, that, 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 that's how it started, even though everybody laughed at me. And you know the barber I used to go to? I used to be an executive uh, before, so uh, uh, I was very respected there. I used to drive a catwalk, you know, so I was respected when I went in there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Klein this, Mr. Klein that, you know? and. Uh, and then when I when I lost, uh, uh, you know, all my money, and when I failed at business, uh, I went there with one of my shoe shine chairs. So I went to the guy and I said, "I'd like to set up my shoe shine chair in your salon, where uh, And uh, from that day on, it treated me like shit. Yeah, made my life miserable. Before that, I was an executive. And treated me like a king. So it just goes to show, shoe shining, don't expect anyone to give you an easy time. Everybody is out to use you, abuse you, take advantage of you, rip you off, steal from you, uh, and it's tough. tough business. I'm going to do the same thing with this boring shoe. Okay. I'm just going to take the dust off and uh, maybe some of the old wax. And during the pandemic, were you able to work? No, no? not at all. Like not even like. Not no. The building was closed here. There were no cocktail parties. That's for sure. No, zero, 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 nothing. Oh. Nothing to do. But you know, 
stay home and, and worry. How would you encourage people to get oh. their shoe shines or get uh, take care of their shoes? Well, they, they, you know, it's nothing I can do. If it's your age and your profession, I mean, I wouldn't want to go to court looking like that. No. Take care of yourself. So, um, but um, they, um, you can't uh, teach grown-ups how to dress, you know? And uh, just like me, I think some of the shoe shiners should, not in Mexico, but or other places. In France, you see, a lot of them are dressing like me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I started it, but uh, I think I did. And uh, because there's, if you want, To be respected, you have to dress for success. In Quebec and Canada, we, we have, and especially in French, il n'y a pas de sous-métier. That means there's no low, lower uh, trade or profession. We're all equal. Well, that's bullshit. I don't believe that. Those are just words. Those are words for people that have graduated and uh, they say that. Yeah. They're too embarrassed to admit that they look on down they look down on some people you know so uh, no it's it's uh, there's nothing to answer your question people um, these days people is there's just they don't have money they don't care about their shoes they're not but they're buying aldo shoes aldo shoes you can get for 50 dollars right so they say why should i pay 12 dollars for a shoe i don't even pay 12 50 bucks for the shoes. We have that kind of logic, and uh, we're thinking, I say, if you paid only uh, $50, then maintain them. Keep them as long as possible, and then be able to say in five years' time, you know what? How long do you think I've had these shoes? Okay, I yeah. paid 50 bucks five years ago. Look at them. Yeah, in a way, it's kind of sustainable, too. It's like you take care of your shoes and yeah. your things, and... You yeah. don't throw everything away like well, we are I used to now. I don't allow that. I educate people. It's one thing I do. I tell every exec, everybody, that the world is not in great big garbage. We're here to save the planet. So you can no longer throw your shoes out. No. You have to go see a shoe shiner. One, you can support the poor guys, probably not making a lot of money. Two, he can make those shoes look amazing, right? And three, you're saving the planet, one person at a time. So I tell my clients all the time, this is your responsibility. You bought these shoes no matter what you paid. Now you have to maintain them because you can't throw them out in the big, you know, garbage dump. When I started the search on business, I was broke. So I was embarrassed to go to, uh, there was a place to buy old clothes and old shoes. I paid six dollars for my first pair of shoes of 2003. Bought my first pair there so I could be more presentable. Cost me six dollars. Six months till they fell apart. And then I bought another pair like 12 bucks. You know, I mean, beautiful shoes to me. It's all relative. So b before you started in the shoe shine business, you didn't like have an idea of it? Like, did you hear no, about before? No, I never, I never shined my shoe in my life. I never heard it. No, I never thought about it, you know? and uh, it was just that, what an idea, that the, I, I noticed that the hair salon, they had everything in it, it was a hair salon for like rich guys, they had everything in it, but they didn't have a shoe shop, what a great idea, Yeah, I personally thought it was a genius, and, um, but, you know, when you're starting out, I didn't know you know, especially, I used to be sort of an executive myself, So then when they saw me shining shoes, some of the customers, mm -hmm. well, they didn't come to me because what do I know about I used to be in a mm -hmm. shining shoes. I had a hard time there uh, making any money. And then uh, one day, uh, my one of my suppliers called me and said, uh, I was at work at the barbershop. And um, he said, uh, he said, uh, one of the, uh, Somebody just called us and said, we need a shoe shiner to shine shoes for us because we rented space at a trade show. We rented a, a booth. And uh, we're going to use the service of the shoe shine to attract people. 
to our booth. Uh, would you be interested in shining shoes for these people? Well, I hadn't made any money in months trying to get this business started. Mm -hmm. So I, I called them and they said, that's what we want to do. Would you be interested? So I said, uh, sure. Uh, uh, how much, you know, how's, how does it work? Well, you tell us how much you want a day and we'll see if it's in our budget. So uh, I told them and, uh, and they took it. Never made so much money in my life in the shoeshine business mm -hmm. at that time. And, um, and then uh, I quit at the barber shop there and I went home and I got on the phone for the next year and I just called and called and called different companies selling my services in the same way that this company hired me for their trade show. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how I got on the map. And then one day, uh, the Montreal Gazette, the big newspaper in Montreal back then, uh, they uh, came and did a story on two pages like this, with my picture and everything. So one day, uh, when I was looking for a building to uh, set up my shoe shine, uh, all the buildings said no or never called me back once they knew I was in this business. And then I came here, it was the last building. And uh, uh, so uh, I talked to the guy in charge of leasing over here, and he said, oh, I love the idea. What an idea. Yeah, I like that. We get a lot of people coming. This is what he told me. It never happened since I'm here. But he told me we have people coming from the airport stopping here because they think it's a big building, so we must have a shoe shiner. So that's what he told me. It, it never happened. But, uh, and so uh, I said, um, Oh, wow, that's great. So uh, what do we do next? He says, oh, well, I'm not in charge of deciding who is going to open their business in this building. You have to talk to the director. Wow, what did I talk to him for? No wonder he was so excited. It's not him making the decision. Yeah. So I called up a few days later because that did an article on me. So a few days after that, I got the courage to call the director. He told him, my name is Harry Klein. I'm a professional shoe shiner in Montreal. You've probably heard about me. You probably saw the article in the Gazette uh, a few days ago. So he said to me, you know what? I wanted to apologize. I'm sorry. I, I didn't read the article. It sounds very interesting. I'm very interested. And uh, please, let's sit down and meet. Please bring me in the article. It's actually the article that got me to be in this uh, building. It's the credibility of uh, a professional company like the Gazette that wrote that and um, great, great piece, great, well written articles. Was it in, in French or in English? in English? But they've written about me in French and English. I've been in every newspaper pretty well in town, Japanese, please, uh, all of them. They've been very kind to me because, like you just said, when you came here, a lot of people are interested in the shoe shot story. How yeah. did it happen? How did you get here? Newspapers are interested sometimes over the years writing articles because yeah. people like to read them. The newspaper in the metro, everybody gets one of those papers. Thousands and thousands of people on their way to work are reading that news, whatever paper that is. I don't remember the name of it. It's called Le Metro because people love to read the story of the shoe shutter. Mm -hmm. How did that guy get to do this job? Blah, blah, blah. Basically the same thing that you're apparently doing right now. Well, most of us were down on our luck. In Mexico, same thing. All over the world, let's face it, if these guys were doctors, they wouldn't be shining shoes, no. They, they, they were down on their luck. They, they, they lost their job. There's different stories, you know. They're yeah. trying to help feed their family. They don't have an education. Um, you know, nobody will hire them for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and so everybody's got their own stories. I, I often tell my clients to tell your children that no matter what they select to do, like they're young now, tell them to, tell them to select something, even like this, and do it for 30 years. You're going to be a superstar in 30 years. And who doesn't want to work? Uh, I, will we be rich? No, we won't. But not everybody is motivated by being rich. 
you want to love what you do, and uh, if you happen to be a person that loves people, uh, what a great profession. Yeah. Two shot of this. And look, it took me to Europe three times, and I got five contracts to go to Europe. One of the presidents of one of the banks in Montreal uh -huh. wanted to send me to Italy, uh, and uh, Shine had a wedding of one of his clients' uh -huh. son. Yeah, and, he, and the, the email was all written out, like, we'll pick you up at the airport at this time uh, with your shoe. We're going to drive you to a small island. You're going to shine there for two hours outside to the guests. And then we're going to pick you up and drive you to another part of, I mean, all that for a shoe shine guy. That's how far I brought my, my trade at the restaurant. Once you know how to shine, you can take your experience and um, your box and shine anywhere in the world. People will look down at you if you don't pick yourself up. You know, I picked myself up, but I started doing this. And people don't have respect for this. Now, some do. I have a lot of lawyer friends. They're very educated, very successful. I mean, very successful. But they talk to me just like they're talking to um, um, a colleague. <laughs> so they're not all uh, treating me bad. Do you think the number of female customers has in, like increased at some point? Or you know, well, when I do cocktail parties, uh, oh. uh, a lot of women climb into the chair. Women climb into the chair because they want to show men that this is no longer a private men's club. Yeah, it's all about leveling the playing field. This is for men and women. Some woman in the building recommended I write it down. I said, "Wow, what a great idea!" Because it's often seen as a bo as a boys' club, as yeah, something like very like ma manly. Uh... Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that's why when I designed the chairs, I wanted them to be built uh, to invite both men and women to climb up. They're not dirty. They're not wooden. They're not way up there. Yeah. So you can't climb down, and um, they're 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 elegant. Prestigious, yeah. yeah, that's what I did. That. Look at that. I had that copyright. We shine your shoes and polish your image. Nice. You know, very catchy. Uh, yeah, a phrase. It makes sense. Whoever you're writing this for, I'm broke. I don't have a dime. There's no money anymore. Yeah. I don't think it's going to come back. Uh, maybe, maybe later. I don't know. I really don't know. Four years, five years, I don't know. Anyway, in the summertime, it's very bad because they're wearing running shoes, people. They're yeah. wearing sandals. Something that has become a trend in Mexico and many countries in Latin America is sneaker cleaning. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, so, I, so shoe shiners have to adapt to the cleaning because, sneakers and even sandals sometimes, like, you know, like summer sandals I've seen. They just, the customers don't come. They don't come for their, it's rare you get a sneaker. I did one the other day, yeah, but people won't come for their, yeah. their sneakers. You know, they're going to save money. Do people usually tip you? Well, uh, usually, uh, yes, they sometimes tip me, yeah. But you've got to get customers to get tips. But, you know, again, just because you do it doesn't mean anybody's going to come. But, um, yeah, so sorry I gave you such a shitty... Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, as you can see how busy I am. Oh, but come on. Yeah, see, my sign says leaving it uh, at 2, but I rarely make it till 2. Like, all my products are look, sapphire. Sapphire, okay. Okay, these are perfume. I do a lot of cocktail parties. Well, not anymore. In the olden days, shoe shiners used to use... Uh, products like kiwi. That was a very popular product around the world. It smells like a shoe repair shop mm. still today. It stinks. What I do is um, I go to that event on um, August 22nd. What I do is I put, um, put cards in their socks like mm -hmm. this. And they're all $100 bills. So it gets people talking about but because I have these special hands that sometimes are out of control, to protect my reputation on their socks, uh -huh. I put this in. So I'm going to be shining at nighttime, right? Mm -hmm. The event starts at 5. I'm going to be partying with everybody. 
And so then around uh, 8 o'clock, people are going to be walking around. Some of them know me. They'll come and want to shine uh, and so on. Well, it's hard to see in the dark. So I'll have my flashlight. Yeah. We'll have to bring this with you when you go to an event. I make people, and I love this. I even do this at cocktail parties indoors. I make the guest hold it. Uh, so this makes him interact with me now. People are watching him. I say left, left, right, right. Now move over more. So he's in there with me. So I find I love when I came up with that idea. You could tell one of your friends in uh, in uh, whatever country you should do it in, but they should adopt that idea because uh, because the, the, the customer or, or the guest, they, they, they're they very enamored that they watch you shine like, wow, oh my God, Jesus, I can't believe. It. So now you're giving them the flashlight, like it, it's like a perimeter of light, and it, it gets them into the whole process. They love it. Uh, thanks, Harry. Thank you for your time and oh, what time? <laughs> Nothing to do. Thank you. I owe you. Let me show you the result on these boots. I think this was a different Shushan experience. And I really learned a lot and it just gave me so much to think about it. Um, I really hope you like this video. It's a different country and a different experience. And it made me like think about Shushan in a different way, you know, like a different pair of eyes always give you something else to think. Well, in the description, you can find the location of Harry Shushan stand. Also my Instagram account in case you want to follow me, my PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more extra content behind the cameras and and new more ideas and pictures and videos and you know more extra content very interesting i hope i hope you like it well i hope you like this video subscribe thumbs up and see you in the next video bye let me know in the comment sections what you think about this shoe shine and also if you ever thought that there was a shoe shiner in montreal city so take care bye it's the first time I've seen a chair like this, so let me know in the comments, please, what you think about the chair. Let me show you the surroundings of where Harry's Shushan place is. You can see this building. Apparently, it was built like 35 years ago. Yeah, impressive building, you know, very like symmetrical. I really like the lines. And you can see also new buildings here, the Marriott, and a church uh, yeah i really like this small like courtyard i guess that would be the name for it um, i just wanted to show you a little bit of of the area there's a starbucks over there there are starbucks everywhere sheraton yeah this is a different view from what you've seen so far in the channel i hope you like this video and i hope you like this shoeshine experience in montreal let me know your thoughts about it i'll be happy to hear them bye This is Kat and today I have again these black leather Oxford shoes style. I found a shoe shiner who has been working for a long time in this neighborhood and I saw him a few times before and I decided to get a shoe shine from him. As you can see these shoes are not so so dirty they're a little bit dusty only and yeah they won't need so much but yeah why not shoes always need like constant shine all the time well uh, let's get a shoe shine <laughs> yeah shoe shine. 
30, ok, va, gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, ¿Le puedo hacer unas preguntas? ¿Sí? Eh, ¿Cómo se llama? Miguel Fior. Mucho gusto, Miguel. Yo me llamo Katia. ¿Y cuántos años lleva trabajando como hacedor de calzado? Pues, no me acuerdo si empecé a los 12 años, hasta que no se perdió. Se puede decir que llevo 50 años. 50 años, oh, bien. ¿Y en este lugar cuánto tiempo lleva trabajando? Llevo poco, llevo poco unos 4 años. Ah, en este lugar. ¿Y antes dónde trabajaba? Antes estaba yo por la Alameda Central, de aquí por acá para todo el, el petróleo. Ajá. Recorría yo dos, tres pasos. Pero con su cajoncito de... Sí, pues el cajoncito, pero ya después me hizo 
Y, por ejemplo, ahorita con lo de la pandemia, eh, ¿cómo ¿se vio afectado mucho su trabajo? Mucho, 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 demasiado. Demasiado, porque a veces había días que no lo hacía yo nada, nada, porque era una situación que porque a pesar de que cerraron los negocios de, de aquí de la zona, ¿usted todavía venía a trabajar? Uh, no, 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 porque dejé de venir porque no tenía caso. Estaba todo cerrado, la gente casi no me hacía, entonces... Fueron días muy difíciles, como te comento, que no, es que iba yo. Había un día que me iba yo así. Sí, ¿Y usted recuerda cuál fue su primera boleada? Y la recuerdo, cosa que nunca se me va a olvidar, porque en 1973, 74, mi primera clienta, Angélica Madrid. ¿A la actriz? Yo la agarré en aquel entonces en el, en el Teatro Lírico que está, si mal no recuerdo, parece que está en la República de Chihuahua, en la calle República, está el Teatro Lírico. Ahí. ¿Y ella iba, o sea, iba caminando y lo vio a usted o...? Ella, ella, ella parece que trabajaba ahí o era la huella del teatro, no sé. Pero yo ahí la... No, no, no. Ahí me la encontré. Yo no sabía quién era él y ya no estoy muy pequeño. Y este, ¿y recuerda qué zapatos estaba utilizando ella? ¿Eran como zapatillas o botas o...? No recuerdo, no recuerdo. Sé que aquel entonces cobraba cierta entradas. Por ejemplo, ¿usted cómo prefiere que le llamen? ¿Haciador de calzado, bolero o no le molesta cualquier? No, en nada me molesta. En nada me molesta, pero se ve muy bonito que nos digan haciador de calzado. Uh -huh. A mí me gusta que me digan haciador de calzado, por mi nombre. ¿Y usted diría que la mayoría de sus clientes son como trabajadores de la zona? ¿O ya tiene como clientes habituales de años? Partes, partes, partes de, de aquí de la zona son mis clientes. Pero tengo muchos clientes que vienen de la República Mexicana, que por suerte se hospedan aquí de la ¿Y usted diría que un gran por, la mayoría de sus clientes son hombres o también tiene algunas clientes mujeres? Pues anteriormente eran puros hombres, pero ahora ya también las mujeres. ¿Y es usted aquí de la Ciudad de México? No, no soy de aquí, pero ya llevo 55 años. Bueno, muchas gracias por, por su historia y por su tiempo y por dejarme documentar su historia. Muchas gracias, Miguel. Cuídese. Hasta luego. Bye. Let me show you the amazing result on the issues. I'm really, 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 really happy with the result, to be honest. They look like mirror shine. The tips are so, so, so shiny. Have a look at the tips. The tips look, wow, they look just amazing. He took the time to carefully like clean it and like clean the soles and kind of apply soap and then some paint and some grease. And I'm really happy with the result. Like I said, there wasn't a lot to do to these shoes because they were looking already shiny, but I'm really, really happy with the result. Let me know in the comment sections what you think about this and if you would like to get the shoes in with Miguel. Well, in the description, you can find the location of Miguel's shoes and stand. Also, my Instagram account if you want to follow me, my PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more extra content and behind the cameras and stuff like that, you know, just some extra content. I hope you can support me there too. Uh, sometimes I put some really interesting content, some like ideas, like new ideas and things that you won't see on YouTube. Well, I hope you like this video, subscribe, thumbs up and see you in the next video. Bye. This is the Jardín del Arte, where, well, I don't know if it's Jardín del Arte, maybe it's Park Sullivan, but this is where you can find the art market every Sunday. I don't know if you recognize this park from the past videos with Miguel. I think, yeah, it was also Miguel, with Miguel 
Now it looks so green and full of life. Um, This is Kat and today I have another video for Shushan with friends. Today I'm with Francisco and my friend Jackie is going to get a Shushan. Jackie has these black boots that wants, you know, wants them to look black again. So you can see they're very pale and dirty and she's excited to bring these boots back to life. Okay, so let's get a boot shine with Francisco. Yeah.
Mom.
Let me show you the result on these boots. I think these boots look like so, so new. They look so shiny. And Jackie was so surprised about the result. Muy loco. Me encanta. Yeah, she says she's loving it. In the description, you can find the location of Francisco Shushan stand if you want to get a shoe transformation like this one. <laughs> also, my Instagram account in case you want to follow me, my Patreon account where I'll be uploading more extra content related to shoes and my PayPal if you want to contribute some shoes to the channel. Well, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, this is Kat, and today I have again this black shoes with, with a wooden heel. Let me show you the soles. The soles are not so worn and the brand is Me Too and the number is 5. Um, today I found a shoe shiner with a shoe shine stand and I'm about to get a shoe shine. I hope you like this video. I talked to him before uh, making the video and he agreed on making videos with me and he also recommended all the shoe shiners I should film videos with. So I'm really excited about this. Um, okay, so let's get a shoe shine. Yeah, shoe shine this time. Hola, buen día. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cuánto me cobra por estos zapatos? 20. Ok, va. Gracias.
hacer unas preguntas? ¿Cómo se llama? A mucho gusto Isidro, yo soy Katia. ¿Y cuántos años lleva en el aseado de calzado? Ya 40 años. 40 años. ¿En este mismo lugar? No, en los estados y lo que es aquí en México, Ah, bien. ¿Y en este, en este lugar cuánto tiempo lleva? 17 años. Ahorita. ¿17? Ah, bien. ¿Y antes dónde trabajaba? ¿Trabajaba también con una silla? No, de ¿Este lugar era de alguien más y usted lo, digamos que después lo, no, se lo traspasaron no, o...? No, 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 estuve luchando por un camioncito. Ajá. No vino un modelo en esta zona y después obtenemos este lugarcito. Ah, sí. entonces digamos que usted vio este lugar y dijo, ah, eh, me gusta, me gusta este. Ah, bien, sí. pensé que era como, por ejemplo, que lugares que ya habían sido Están como ocupados. ocupados y que se traspasaban. No, no, no. Hubo dos modelos. Pero ya por la antigüedad de edad, uh -huh. piensa que se fueron a su pueblo o que se fueron a su pueblo. Pero habían dos boletos antes que yo llegara. Aquí tengo 17 años. ¿Y usted cómo aprendió? Pues pagando las boletas con otros compañeros. Pues no soy bolero. Ajá. Ah, entonces como a, viendo y así a, practicando aprendió. Exactamente, con un cajoncito. Podemos tener una idea. Empecé a los 15, 16 años ya de bolerito. Ah. Gracias a Dios. Lo bueno que me apoyó mucho de cita que saqué la tengo. Uh -huh. Y me gustó este oficio, entonces aquí Ah, qué bueno. Por ejemplo, ahorita con lo de la pandemia, sí le afectó bastante. Me afectó mucho. Hacía ah, varios compañeros como comerciantes. Cualquier tipo de negocio les afectó. Y bueno, mi negocio lo cerraron de este lado, cerraron. Pero he venido a estar. Para mí, para cerrar para el pan, aunque sea. Ajá, sí. Y sí, a veces le podí, sí. ¿sí? Me afecta mucho por el modo. Que caiga, yo me por ejemplo, el gobierno no les dio algún apoyo por lo de la pandemia o... ¿no? Yo la verdad tengo seis años en Matevilla, te digo, de la unión de Pueblo de Calzano, por el canal. Ahora estoy aquí en el... Ahí ya me cambiaron la zona de los edificios, para renovar mi permiso y mi licencia. Uh -huh. Y ya tengo seis años que no pago de ese edificio, por lo menos que tengo. Ah, Son bien. Son los únicos beneficios que me dan los que desde el gobierno. Uh -huh. Ah, pero un apoyo así, digamos, económico, ¿no? económico no. Ah, y por ejemplo, ¿usted recuerda cuál fue su primera goleada? Ah, no sé, sí, ahí en Tacuba. ¿Sí? Con mi cajoncito, gracias a Dios. Sí. Pero, tengo, anduve en cualquier tipo de mi barrio aquí del Deco. Por eso andamos todos aquí con vida, pero le damos aquí con vida. Mira. Ah, qué bueno. Gracias a Dios. Qué bueno. ¿Y es usted entonces aquí de Porque originario? Ah, sí, un ejemplo de Tacuba. De Tacuba. Ah. Sí, en Tacuba también me dijo que hay varios asesores de calzado, ¿no? Que para, para poder... Y ahí llegué yo de Chalá. Ah, bien. Ya no me gustó. Y ya... Y es que la renta está muy caro. Sí. Ya la cuidaba. Ahorita, por si hay algo... A la semana pagaba, más bien pagaba yo 350 a la semana. Mm. Por tener eso. Nada más te ayudaban con el material. Pero ya dependiendo ya de ti, a subir tal vez para ganar. Ajá. Pero pagaba renta y pagaba bodega a la silla. Uh -huh. sí, ya no me gustó, mejor ahí nos, me abrí el camino mejor. Ah. Aquí andamos, te digo, todavía trabajando. Ah, bien. Y, y por ejemplo, usted diría que la mayoría de sus clientes son como personas que trabajan cerca o pues ya como clientes habituales que tiene usted? De la Galloso, aquí de la clínica, Ajá. los de los tribunales son los clientes que me apoyan. Ya uno que otro caminante que pasa, pues ya se paga, no pasa la cama hasta aquí. Ajá. Ah, sí, es que está, aquí está el Galloso, ¿no? Es por acá, ¿no? ¿Por por acá? Ah, bien, bien, bien. Y aquí tenemos el Fausto en el Negro, el Tentiazo, y después de que... Ya no voy de aquí hasta que me vaya igual que Y, por ejemplo, la mayoría de sus clientes diría que son hombres o también... Oh, la mayoría son casi hombres, de vez en cuando, una que otra vez. Ajá, y... 
cerca de aquí nada más. Ah, ¿y se limpian que ¿Como tenis o zapatos, botas? botas. Sí. Yo lo que caiga lo boleo, porque no aguanta que salga para la pata. Pues. ¿Usted diría que antes las mujeres se boleaban también los zapatos o es algo como más no, nuevo? Se si, si las mujeres antes para ¿Sí? Era casi más hombres que mujeres. ¿Qué mujeres? Ah, sí, pues, de mujer y hombre, pues, me pasa, pero me Por ejemplo, veo ahorita que tiene unos zapatos ahí que se, ya se, se los dejan y ya sí, viene más tarde. Ya pasan como a las 3 o 4 de la tarde, ya pasan por ellos. Pues hoy, hoy tal vez como en dos vamos a las 12 o la 1, ya los volvemos. Oh. Sí, porque a veces pasan antes de la comida y se los llevan. Oh, yeah. Ay, qué bueno, qué bueno escuchar que, que sí, que luego le llegan así trabajos y que... ¿Y tiene usted clientes así ya de años, años que sigan viniendo? Sí. Ah, qué bueno, qué bueno que siga teniendo ahí sus clientes ya frecuentes. Obviamente, si no, adelante. Sí. <risa> mucho, mucho gusto y muchísimas gracias por, por su tiempo y por la entrevista y por... Oh, muchas gracias, cuídese, hasta luego, bye. Let me show you the result on the issues. I think they're looking so shiny. The shine was pretty, um, pretty fast, but I think they didn't need much work done. So I'm really happy with the result. And let me know in the comment sections what you think about it. I'm sorry the intersection is kind of loud, but that's the reality in many places here in Mexico City. In the description, you can find the location of uh, this stand. Also, my Instagram account in case you want to follow me. My PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel. And the link to my Patreon if you want to support my channel and watch some extra content and behind the cameras and all of that. Well, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, this is Kat and today I have again these chunky boots. These are not leather, this is synthetic, but I think they look so, so good. I mean, even though it's not leather, I think I have kept them so well. Let me show you the soles. The soles are, you know, they have some lines here and they're actually not so slippery. The number is 38 Europe. The brand is Bershka and I bought them here in Mexico City. Today I'm with Francisco and I'm about to get a, a chunky boot shine. Okay, so let's get a chunky boot shine. Yeah. <laughs> Hola Francisco, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Buenas tardes. ¿Cuánto me cobra por estas? Sí, ok, va, gracias.
Piensa que hay una diferencia cuando, por ejemplo, cuando se limpian los zapatos y se hace el rechinido o no, rechinido o no, o cree que es como una cuestión de estilo solamente. Es estilo. Sí. sí, no, no tiene nada que ver, nada que ver. Es que a veces metes más fuerza y no sirve de nada porque te, te llevas el, lo que le echas. Es un lustre. Aquí te esa pesadilla, dale una ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Sí, nada más es pasadizo. Oh, y por ejemplo, ¿a usted le gusta que rechine o no? No. no? ¿Y a la mayoría de sus clientes cree que les guste? No, tampoco. Hay otras formas de bolear, hay otras formas de, de ese de, de vito, no es que se, se aplica agua y le das este, ese estilo militar. Ese me lo enseñó un militar también, se Ajá. llama pulir. Pulir el calzado. ¿A usted cómo le gusta que lo llamen? ¿Eh, ¿Hacedor de calzado o bolero? Pues no me molesta de las dos. No me molesta, pues es lo que es uno, ¿no? Hacedor de calzado, bolero. Siempre no me molesta. Bueno, muchas gracias, Francisco. Cuídese mucho. No, nada, Hasta gracias. luego. I want to show you the amazing result on these chunky boots. I think Francisco did an amazing job at cleaning these shoes and shining them and painting them. And yeah, I'm very happy with the result. And he also took great care of the tips. Have a look at that. Yeah, they're looking so, so good, like kind of new. In the description, you can find the location of Francisco's shoeshine stand. Also, my Instagram account in case you want to follow me. My PayPal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel and my Patreon where I'll be uploading more extra content and behind the cameras and you know what happens before I edit the video and all of that. Well, I hope you like this video, subscribe, thumbs up and see you in the next video. Bye, thank you so much for watching, for all your support and nice comments, it really means a lot to me. I want to show you also the side, yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty well, like the color looks so, so good, so neat and yeah, he always, always, always takes great care of these shoes. Okay, take care. Bye.
de leve, de leve. De, de, de tomar por uno caro, ¿no? De caro y de, y de verdad normal. No se le figura. Se le hace pica hasta acá al momento. Está hasta atrás. Y también. Hi, this is Kat, and today I have again these red boots with heels. Today I'm in the Cuauhtémoc neighborhood and I found a shoe shiner last time I was walking around here. This shoe shiner is outside of a beautiful building and under a beautiful shaded tree, so I decided it was a good idea to, to make a video with him. I asked him if it was okay for him to record the video and he agreed with me, so um, I decided to, to film the video. Okay, so let's get a boot shine. Yeah, boot shine. Hola, buenas tardes, ¿cómo está? ¿Cuánto me cobra por estos, estos botas? Ah. 30 pesos. 30? 30 ok, <laughs> gracias. Se va a ir volando. ¿no? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Es que todavía haciendo que rechine porque no rechina O sea, no rechina y mucha gente La gente más que nada ignorante Si no rechina dice que no queda uno La gente no sabe O sea, la gente que no tiene, que no hace mundo Porque no han viajado Tengo un cliente, tiene casa aquí en Polanco pero el rato a veces me mandan, me mandan paquetería más que con una ocasión abrieron la maleta yo han dado 20 pares los zapatos humildemente vale, valen arriba de 15 pesos de 15 hasta 25 mil pesos los zapatos la calidad o sea, cuando la gente me dice que es caro, es caro, es barato como este señor me trajo mis botas, me las hago porque ellos me conocen. ¿Listo, Paola? Muchas gracias. Let me show you the amazing result on these boots. I think he did an amazing job at cleaning the leather and applying some grease, some red grease and i'm really happy with the results he also took the time to clean the heel as you can see here it looks clean yeah in the description you can find the location of this shushine stand also my instagram account in case you want to follow me my paypal account if you want to contribute some shoes to this channel or boots to this channel and my patreon account where i'll be uploading more extra content and behind the cameras and testing ideas and you know just some extra content a bit different from YouTube but shoe related. Well, I hope you like this video. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and for all your support. It really means a lot to me. Bye. Y la llevo. Está ah, bueno. Déjeme una y llevas una. Bien. Está bueno. Si no se quiere. Y, y, y si vas así de una vez te llevo. A la hora se lo echa de volada. Te traigo el dinero para que de una vez te pagues. Sí. ¿Sale? No, pues esto lo hace luego, lo hago. Sale. Sí, no me no me pique yo tanto. Está bien, pues. Sale. ¿Qué dice, tío?